So welcome. Thought I'd share something a little bit different today than the typical fly fishing on the New Zealand River, which is what we do most of, um, more than likely 99% of our time as New Zealand fly fishermen. A um, few things bring me here today. One, I've uh, had a, a run of incidents with my vehicle. Uh, that won't be fixed till Monday, it's Sunday today. Actually was planning on borrowing the wife's car and then all the electrics blew on that on Saturday morning. And uh, I went to borrow the son's car and that had clapped out as well. Then I was going to fly to Auckland and buy another car and that um, that all fell through. So um, this weekend we've actually got a New Zealand team practice and all the guys are on, on a river elsewhere in the country and uh, I'm actually stuck here so borrowed a car. And the other thing that brings me here is as New Zealand fishermen um, in the competition scene and while not everybody's into the, the competition factor of, of fly fishing or even fishing in, in general, um, what we really struggle as Kiwi fly fishermen to match overseas is the the reservoir or lake bank session fishing, um, particularly to stockfish. Uh, New Zealand predominantly is around probably 95% wild fish with a few lakes like this one behind me that are stocked annually and um, we've just recently had a, a release just here about a week ago. So this is the best opportunity that as a Kiwi fly fisherman, especially one that's looking to be successful internationally and head overseas and fish venues with stock fish, this is our best opportunity to mimic those conditions and you just simply don't get it. So I've taken that opportunity to come here. Um, New Zealand still waters aren't fished a, a hell of a lot. A few guys will fish for shoreline spawning fish in winter. A um, lot will head out into to lakes, troll, jig, lead line, some will fly fish, some will anchor up, cast into holes, um, lock style of drifting in a boat is becoming a little bit more popular but not a lot actually target the shoreline still water and so what we're looking to do here is work the water in various depths, lengths and in sections. So in a typical competition scenario on this lake, we this bank here may be broken into 20 sections internationally they're called pegs or beats and my peg may start here and I can fish this so how am I going to extract the most fish out of this water and a lot of people have asked me how do you fish a place like this a lot of people have come to this particular lake and, and said I can't catch a thing how do, how do you fish it so today I'm going to share a few tips and tricks so we've set up a, a marter of, of rods and lines and I've started with a floater, then an intermediate and a sink tip intermediate, simply because there's some rocks in the closer in on the bank and some weeds, so if we can use the sink tip to get over top of that without catching up in this in this foreground here. Then I've got a, a DI3, which is actually a distance line. I can use that to cast in short, but then later on, once I've used up this in close water, I'll utilize the head on that to, and the running line that's incorporated to really shoot out, get further out into the um, into the zone where I may have pushed fish out, or fish just simply were hanging out there and I couldn't reach them. Um, then I've got a, a, a Type 6 or a DI6 sweep. And what these various lines do when we talk about that is you've got your, your floater, obviously it floats. Um, your intermediate, which most intermediates sink at about 1.5 inches per second. And then the, the then when we talk about the threes, so that's DI3 is three inches a second and so on. So six type six or DI6, six, six inches a second. And I don't think we'd be needing a seven or an eight on a lake like this, but you just never know. So we're going to go through those lines and see what we pick up. Just going to work in close. At first I'll always begin with a steady retrieve. And just mix it up with each cast. For the next retrieve I might give it a couple of quick pulls. Slow it down, knit it a bit. 
just constantly mixing it up. The pattern will always emerge what's working best. And it's like we're just trying to work out what they're really taking what the food source is in here probably say it's a lot more nymph based but we're appealing to their aggressive nature so I'll just keep working in close here we won't just bomb one way out back these um, fresh stock fish only been in there a week so they probably haven't really turned on to the natural food source and locked in so they'll still be looking up they'll still be close to the surface they've grown up feeding on pellets in the in the pens over in Rotorua right now we'll slow it down knit it strip knit knit and then we'll hang it up it's really important to hang whether you're fishing from a boat or even from the shore the fish if you get good good sight conditions you'll see the fish follow sometimes for quite a while as soon as you stop and hang they they can't resist it this net long handle here so I don't have to really get into the water you got to try and shoot long distance line with this long grass around you and these little stalks line so in a minute I'll actually share a little tip to avoid that I thought I'd just cover this moving fish first, but always just watching your bow between your rod tip and the and the water where it's just sitting there. If that just lifts unexpectedly, strike. Alright, so the fish are probably out a little bit further. We'll just keep extending that. Then we'll go down on a line class. If they're a bit deeper, it is a, it is a fairly deep lake. Just off the shore here, it's four or five feet. It's crystal clear so it's deceiving. Got all sorts of signs behind me so got to keep that cast up. really bright and sunny so I suspect that the fish are probably a bit deeper got a nice little riffle though that'll help Just hang, hang, hang. Right, 
we'll try and punch one up with it. Keep increasing our cast distance every presentation. Really concentrate on getting that line laid out straight. One big strip after it lands just to straighten out your whole rig because if you get a take on the on the entry or on the hang or on the drop you more than likely miss that take. Now we've switched up our um, switched up our line to a DI3 this is that distance line I was talking about. But I'll still keep it in quite close. I don't want to bomb our way out the back and push any fish that are there further out beyond our reach. So we just slowly pick our way. Could be four fish there. If we bomb out the back, we may get one. Nice steady retrieve. Slow it down, miss it. And hang. So I picked up a bit of weed there. So obviously I'm, I'm getting down. It was a pretty slow retrieve and already with the wind blowing oh, I've caught daisies. What, what will off, what will happen with these freshly stocked fish? There will be wild fish in here as well. But um, what will happen with these freshly stocked fish is they generally pot up when they're new, before they um, start to build their natural instincts and behave in a way that's more suited, suited to the natural environment that they've now been placed in. But um, sometimes they move in pods. And there we go, just a slow, oh, now he's run me straight into the weed, bugger. Try and break him out, yep, there we go, there we go. And to me that looks like a stockfish, it's about that size, it's not as powerful as a wild fish may be. The fish in here are really strong. He obviously hasn't grown into his natural environment yet, but yep. We have a, we don't have any fin clip. So that could be a, a wild fish. He's about 30 centimeters. And off he goes. So 
So there we go. We pounded the shit out of it with our intermediate. Switched up to a DI3 and got success in the first couple of casts. So I mentioned back there that um, when you get all these bits of grass, especially these lovely daisies, they love to catch a line and when you're shooting your line, it just catches. So you lose 15, sometimes 30 feet of casting distance with these blades of grass and these little daisy pods catching your line. So what I normally have here is a, is a mat and uh, it's a specifically designed mat but I've forgotten that today. Uh, secondly, another great option is a towel. Dip the towel in the water and lay it out. The towel does two things when it's wet, it stops blowing away, stops the edges lifting up and it keeps your line lubricated so it doesn't tangle as much. But today I've got the wife's picnic blanket so uh, hopefully she's not watching this but it'll have to do. We'll just wet this. And we lay it out. Now we've got somewhere to drop our line, shoot our line without it all tangling up and catching on this grass. Sometimes when it's windy like this, it's blowing our line off the mat. I'll just get down low. It's always nice to bring a little fold up chair. Any little pause or, or wait, it's the way strike. Sometimes it's just touching the weed, but Yeah, I think by the way I'm picking up weed every now and then this line would be the max for this shoreline so I'm happy to keep going with this and just we've kind of worked it out that we can get down to the fish. And there's a daisy again. Shows you how important it is. Clear your area, even spend a bit of time picking those daisies. There we go, that's a better fish, much better fish. And he's run me in the weed as well. Yeah, boy! It's a really nice fish. We might walk with this guy. Whoa. Oh, 
going straight for that log. Rips made another local guy. Just a bit of spin in here. Just about to head out on this kayak. I can just seen a few nice ones the other day. Just along this edge, but we're just gonna keep working this because this is why we're here. Just just keep working this piece of water and maximize it. So the wind's starting to drop off now if this turns into a This goes glassy, she's gonna get tough. So that was quite a nice fish, but I walked it so far up, I couldn't be bothered bringing it back because I forgot, didn't take my net. Couldn't be bothered bringing it up to the camera to show you but that was a really nice fish got lucky with that huge log there he just went I don't know he didn't want to utilize it to save himself maybe he knew I was just gonna kiss him and let him go again seem to like it really on the paws in between the nits it's almost as soon as they're taking it they're in the weed definitely down there whoa that was a take weeded weeded straight away Healthy weed in there though. So where you get this in close weed and these rocks, that's where the sink tip really comes into its own. It can stay out of that obstructions. This is a level sinking line, so it's actually down there dragging in the weed. And when I get to that point, I'm just pulling through the weed, and that seems to be when the fish are taking, and the, so then they're straight into the weed. I've got lucky so far, they both swam out. Well, the smaller one was wedged in there, but he managed to just break him out. So while we've been bombing straight out, it is important to cover all the angles. Now we'll just count that down. Pretty much covered all of this water, so we'll just give it a countdown. Maybe 10 seconds. Constantly, slowly knitting for contact. So that that guy with this that spins here, he was saying he's covers these fish quite a lot with the spinner, and they just they hate it and they bugger off. They know it's not uh, real. So he's actually decided to start fly fishing. So good on him. He's going to run a Hamill's killer today, I reckon he'll pick up a fish, it's a good pattern, successful pattern. But the sun's getting higher, 
this is what it's all about it's just about um maximizing every opportunity you can get just if it gets if the fish start to shy off and sun's high and they just go off the feed i mean they're not going to stop feeding we've got to find a way to catch them Maybe I'll, uh, there's fish moving out there in the river channel, but beyond my cast, 200 metres. Maybe just fish uh, more static, another fish jumping. Might be better to fish uh, dry fly with some nymphs under it when it gets this bright. Because all those takes have been um, very subtle and on the pause or the, the drop or the hang. It's hard to work out what they're actually feeding on if they're, if they're jumping and they're active. Um, couple over the bushes over the far side they're obviously feeding on terrestrials coming out of the trees these ones out in the middle of the river channel possibly snails or maybe damsels haven't seen a lot of damsels around Right, three seconds, four seconds, five. I'm always counting in my head. They generally will take it in between the drop, which is probably around six seconds, and um, 10 seconds after that, and then you basically, that's just wasted time fishing there then. Better off recasting, repositioning. So I suspected with it being so glassy, even though there's a little riffle that's really bright, sun's high, I suspected that just fishing more static would be better. And I've put on a dry nymph and within 30 seconds of it hitting the water. Looks like he's taken the pheasant tail. It's like a dark seals fur, pheasant tail, kind of almost mimics a, a floating snail, the seals fur traps the air bubble, it's a nice fish. Another fish rising just up here, so maybe they're just turning on. So that's why it's important to cover our water with all these different techniques and having these rods set up so we're not burning time stopping. And it's a bloody cracking fish. So we've just changed techniques. We fish a bit more static, smaller nymphs. Obviously we knew there were fish in there, we picked up a few stripping lures through but it just wasn't really firing as much as I, you, you got a feeling when you're at a, somewhere, wherever you're at a fishery, you just got a feeling that there's fish there. What have we got to do to break the code to get them on the bank? Uh, so I quickly grabbed my dry nymph rod, fished a little bit more static, within 20 seconds of the fly hitting the water we were on. So. It's a beautiful fish. Just 
been to war static nymphine for nothing went back to the inter because there was a few bit of surface activity and still nothing even covering those fish so I grabbed that DI3 distance line again and I could get it an extra sort of 15 feet over onto that far bank uh, the, the sand bank and just let it sink down and right on that edge once again just really soft take yes Beauty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got him, we got him. We got him. Didn't bring the net down though. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, epic. Nice fat fish. No fin clip, possibly wild.